going on? It's your boy Mixed Man's to be here live from the MMB Radio Studios for the MMB Radio Podcast, where no topic is too big or too small. We talk about them all. And on the phone lines, I want to welcome in a woman who's not only done Playboy, not only has done Penthouse, she's an adult film star. She does music. We're going to get into a lot of things with this woman. I am so crazed and excited right now to welcome her in. So let's welcome her in right now. Christiana Sin, what's going on? Hi, hi. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, listeners. <laughs> yes, I'm totally, totally stoked to have and you on tonight. I just couldn't wait to be on because I, I'm such a huge fan of your name. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, and, and I told you that, I, that there is just like, that's something, I, that's the best part of the podcast so far for me. That someone got excited uh, about my name. Oh, okay. Well, do you want to just like, oh, um, do you want to like let me go and like, go do something yeah, else? Yeah, yeah, we can, yeah. And that, that's the podcast. No. Um, but no, I'm totally excited to have you on. It's a huge honor. And it, is, it is the holiday season and, you know, we just celebrated Thanksgiving. So I, you know, my late thanks. I'm thankful to say that I've had you have you on the podcast tonight. So thank you. So sweet. Did you do anything for Thanksgiving? I mean, just your traditional stuff. You know what I mean? We ate turkey, watched football, and then, you know, Spent a bunch of money on Black Friday, but what was your Thanksgiving? Oh, Nobody yeah. cares what my Thanksgiving was. How was oh, your Thanksgiving? Oh my gosh! Okay, so mine started out really sweet and like innocent. Like I, I we had Friendsgiving, and that's like where you go to. Oh, it's all friends, and so I, I, I literally went to like my the town where I kind of grew up. I went into high school. It's a really small town, um, and I, I was uh, in a town called Morgan Hill, and I was with my friends in their house and. And she gave us all a gift, and she asked me and all the girls to be bridesmaids in her wedding, and it was super cute. And everybody's like crying, and then like then we started, you know, we played cards against humanity, then we played karaoke, and my and we were singing into the re- re- remote controllers, and she picked up a flashlight, but her fucking flashlight. Oh, sorry, can I say? Can I cut? Sorry. <laughs> I think you just did. <laughs> oh, what? I didn't hurt with me, <laughs> but so her flashlight was a taser, and it went up in her hand. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that was a taser, and I, it was so great because I got it on video. And then so it started out cute and sweet. We're like all crying over being happy bridesmaids, and literally we ended the night with tasing each other. They're like, no, you do it, you do it, and everybody was doing it to each other. <laughs> was there alcohol involved in this? Because I think someone would have to like liquor me up. A and little bit. Me. Oh no, no, I, I didn't get tased. I'm, I'm such a little baby. I really can't. I, I hate physical pain. But I, I watched and took videos, and I did a really good slow motion one, which was great because you could just see the pain on their face as they <laughs> get shot. Well, and the sparks out. Definitely got to see that. I mean, you got to tweet that out, and post it on Instagram. I, I think that would be yeah. A really oh my god, video. I, yeah. I, I put it on my story on Instagram. I'll, I'll do it on my on my Twitter just so, so it lasts longer. <laughs> so it sounds like you had exciting, great Thanksgiving. I mean, if that's you know not, not a traditional thing, made my Thanksgiving sound boring. Um, I didn't get tased. Um, but I was at the malls this weekend, so, you know, I'm sure there was somebody that might have gotten tased for, you know, taking something. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, <Totally> tradition. <laughs> again, not a traditional, you know, thing, that, but it could be a new tradition, you know, like, next year, <laughs> get together and just start tasing each other and see what, you know, who, you know, who makes it. Now, you mentioned you played that cards for, what is it, cards for against humanity? Cards Against Humanity, yeah, it's a, it's an amazing game. And the night before, we had played it with my father, and my father's like in his, in his like late sixties, and it was so funny, like because I I wanted to play it with the kids and the parents. Like you guys have to have your parents over, where the kids will be over. We got to play with our parents because I we got to see our parents like the awkward look on their face before they read a really dirty card. I, and, say, uh, <laughs> I have no idea what the game is about. I keep seeing it at Target. At Target oh on the shelves, and I have no okay. idea what it is. You you love this game. So basically, uh, let's see. It's basically, um, you you pick a you have a card. Uh, everybody has like seven cards, and what you know the person who goes it's their turn, and they pick a card from the pile, and it'll say like it'll be a random question like um, uh, I don't know um I didn't I tased my friends on Thanksgiving because and then um then what you have to do is you have to pick which card match, which, whichever one is the right answer. And really the person who determines it is like whoever thinks it's the funniest. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, but it, so anyways, the, the cards range from things that are like cute and fuzzy to like pickles or puppies to like <laughs> dead people stacked up in a windmill. Like, <laughs> like it really like, okay. it's really, like <laughs> really crazy stuff. Like, 
like one of them was like children's tears, but like, like, like so, you know, getting those cards is really like, <laughs> like that's the fun of the game. So you, you know? can get some pretty crazy like cards as some you know weird stuff on it. Oh yeah, for sure I did. Oh yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's now, what makes now they have different versions of this, correct? Is yeah, they have that. The, yeah, they have one that just, I think it just came out, it's called the Bigger and Blacker version. The Bigger and Blacker. Why does that sound like the name of a DVD? Right? Yeah, well, because I think one of the cards is BBC for real. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like, it's like at the bottom, visit us online at blacken.com, you know? Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the cool thing yeah, is, that. tonight we're going to talk all about you. So, are you cool with that? Fun. I guess. I mean, I thought I was here to interview you, but, you know. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm boring. I'm lame. I tell people, people <laughs> ask me, they're like, hey, so, like, how many... <laughs> we should do a holiday together. <laughs> if you want to spend the holidays with me, I totally can make sure I can arrange that. I'm, like, Next yeah, I'm down. Be- no, you are so good, though, when you're, like, hey, we're supposed to be... like, you're, like, you're on it. I want to have you, like, announce them. <laughs> you're so good at it. <laughs> I, I'm told, like I said, I, I, I will do anything. I can do, you know, bar mitzvahs. I do, you know, wedding parties. I do divorce fun? parties. I've done Oh, my it. gosh, fun. Well, yeah. you know what? My friends are getting married, so maybe you could do their, their, their wedding. Hopefully, they're not getting a divorce party. Hopefully, they're stick to the marriage party. <laughs> but if not, if they are, you know, I can do that for them, no. too. They're already familiar I, with me, so, you know. Yeah, I already know who to call. <laughs> exactly. So one of the cool things about having different guests on the podcast, because people say to me all the time, they're like, yeah, like, how do you get some of these cool and interesting people on the podcast? And then we're going to find out about all the cool and interesting stuff about you, because I had fans blow me up on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, shout out to all the people who I said just use the hashtag, who decided to just take it to the next level and just slide in my DMs. Um, you know, thank oh, you for you that. Do you have any interesting pictures to, like, make their question be asked? Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. It's because people – well, here's the thing. I tell everybody, send me in questions. And we got a lot of questions people want to know tonight about you and hear from you. But when, uh, just a <laughs> fair warning to these people that when you send me a question, you don't have to include a dick pic with it. You know, it's like oh, – You don't have to. No, you don't have to. Not to me anyway. I mean, if you want them, I don't like unsolicited dick pics, so – I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, maybe just focus on your, your, your question will get answered either way. The big pick will not be the deal. If you send me, like, money, like, that's no, not yes. now we're talking. <laughs> money talks. Dick picks do not make me pick your question first. No, you know? it is. <laughs> it doesn't make a sound. <laughs> exactly. But, um, so, again, I'm learning all this new stuff about you because, you know, they, they prep me here. They give me a little, you know. A little call sheet with a little bit of information, and I try to fill in the pieces because when I do research, it really means just watching hours and hours and hours of your footage. But oh, well, I, I, <laughs> it's great. It's the best part of the podcast is the research. Um, but let everybody know, like, where are you originally from? You said you're in a small town that you grew up in. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I, I'm from California. I've lived in California my whole life. And I went to a really, really small high school called Hollister High School, uh, or San Benito now it's called. And um, yeah, and then I, I, I was in the Bay Area, like moved up to like Gilroy and then San Jose and then San Francisco, and then I just moved to LA. So I'm a California girl my whole life. Okay. And you, I'm a you started <laughs> off doing glamour modeling, correct? Yes. I started out, um, I did Playboy. Mm-hmm. And then. Uh, I was uh, I went to school for beauty school. I got my license, and then I was like, hmm, uh, I did Playboy, so I was trying to look for a job. Uh, it's like super difficult. It's very really competitive in the Bay Area. And then when, once the pictures came out, once they got once they came out, I was working like forty hours a week nude modeling, and I was like finally making money, you know. But I wasn't doing the career I thought I was going to do, but I was making money, so I couldn't complain. And, and I was having fun, and I was. Good at it. We we're okay at it. <laughs> Decent. <laughs> yeah. So, well, well, take it back a little bit. So, what at what point did you decide, you know, like as a career, that you wanted to do glamour modeling? And when you like when you knew you wanted to do glamour modeling before Playboy, did you decide that you wanted to do not nude uh, modeling? You or? know what? I, I I decided that it would 
Okay. Oh, okay. Well, you know, we're going to go back now. This is a story I actually, I've never, I don't think I've ever told any, an, an interviewer this before. So, um, uh, yeah, I've, I've never an told this to an interviewer. But yeah, I know it really is. So, um, okay. Wow. So when I was still in high school and all my little friends were on spring break, um, I didn't do spring break. I, uh, I don't know how I, I convinced my parents to fly, fly me to LA. Uh, for a photo shoot and I had done photo shoots in high school like the, the first pictures like I really had like I did a couple of photo shoots in high school they were they're cute you know I, I still have the pictures but then this photographer like I, I was 18 but uh you know he's like yeah come to LA you know shoot so they flew me to LA I shot but they were nude pictures I didn't tell my parents that and um you know I intended to send them to Playboy and um and they were like like explicit nudes, but they were like you know they're classy. But I mean they're like you know artistic. But um, my mom found the pictures and she was like, oh no, like what? What is this? I'm like, oh, it's art, you know. And, but then we kind of like never talked about it again. Um, but uh, you know, obviously, I mean, I was very okay with it. I felt really empowered by it, even when I was still in high school. And then I I didn't I didn't even tell anybody. I didn't even tell like, like my best friend either. I just, I did it. Like, it was like my, like my little secret, but I was like, ha, ah, fuck yeah. I mean, hell, I mean, ooh, hell yeah. I have like a double life. I'm like halfway here in this small little, small little town. And then I have my big life in LA. <laughs> so I felt like, um, I felt really, really like um, empowered. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. Playboy came around and like, the, the, you so, submitted okay, the Playboy? Like, so no. So they actually, they, they came out to me. So, so this was, okay. So that was when I was like 18, like freshly 18. Um, so there is like there's nudes there's nudes of me and, and proof that I was like a naked eighteen year old. <laughs> if, if, if anybody wants to see them, if anybody cares. <laughs> um, so um, uh, a couple of years later, um, I you know I had some like I was a stylist uh, in San Francisco, I was like a personal shopper, and you know just doing maybe little jobs and stuff. And then um, Playboy asked me through like three different platforms. They like emailed me. They found me through like you know like uh, Model Mayhem, and they found me through like through Facebook. And then I checked out the. I was like, wow, like they're either they're really persistent or this is really a scam. So I checked the the woman writing me uh, the emails. I looked her up on LinkedIn, and there she was. So I responded back right away, and I it took me like literally half of a second to decide if I wanted to, to, to decide it was an absolutely yes. And it, like, were yeah. you, you were just totally like cool with this when you first went out there and started doing mood modeling? Like, well, like, I mean, I, I'm just like, you know, it's not easy that anybody could just, you know, decide that yeah, I want to just take my clothes off. Like, did you have well, to on the day of, yeah, I almost fainted. I was so nervous. I, I kept forgetting to breathe. I was, you know, cause um, you know, I, I, I remember I, I even had a boyfriend at the time too. And he was like, he, he was like, Oh, I can't be with you if you, if you do this. And I was like, okay, well, I guess, I guess it's over then. <laughs> <laughs> could, could you imagine if I just ended up with him and like never took my clothes off and then like I have kids and I lose my body and then I'm like, Oh damn, I'm back in the day. It was so hot. I wish I had, I had a photographic proof. <laughs> I hate you now. I'm poisoning you slowly, you know. <laughs> no regrets, you know. But yeah, no, I was. I mean, yeah, no, I was. I honestly, like, one of the most liberating experiences of of my life, and I was shot by Josh Ryan, who's just like an amazing photographer, and um, it really just like set the whole tone for my set the path for where I was going. Now, now, how did your family react when they saw, you know, obviously your mom reacted oh. with, you've seen the new photos, but when you got to be Playboy and Playboy, you know, having have this repetition of being a, uh, you know, uh, classy art photos, well, like, were they father, still a little weirded father, out? Well, you know what, there's no, once I do something, there's no stopping me, but, uh, you know, my father's from Chicago, so is Hugh, uh, Hugh Hefner's from Chicago as well. So I was like, well, I, I, this is how I told them. And I told them on Father's Day. What timing. <laughs> <laughs> totally was, timing. Oh, I, yeah, I, we were, like, at, like, a, the mall. And there was, a, like, a cardboard cutout of, like, Hugh Hefner or something. And I was like, oh, speaking of Hugh, he's like, what? We weren't talking about him. I was like, well, um, anyways, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Like, you, you know, you guys have, like, a couple things in common, like, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm going to be like, you know, you're both from Chicago. I'm going to be working for him. He's like, wait, he's like, you're going to LA to take your clothes off. And I was like, 
oh yeah he's like well so Hugh Hefner is gonna be your boss I'm like well yeah <laughs> he's like uh he wasn't he's like I mean I'm not crazy about that idea but you know I know if you're gonna do it you're gonna do it a you know 100 percent, and I'm proud of you and I was like oh <laughs> it's like really like yeah was, I felt so good when he told me that so you got the backing, the support, you do Playboy, and then Penthouse rolls around. And yeah, the Penthouse, Penthouse is, is big not big Playboy. <laughs> well, no, I mean, honestly, I mean, the, the pictures are just as, just as gorgeous. They're just as beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, Bob Guccione, he, he really was like the pervious, not the pervious mind, but like pervier than Hugh Hefner, at, especially at the reigning times, you know. Because uh, he he was publishing more explicit pictures, he was ex- he was publishing things that weren't even seen before, like like peeing and like squirting and like all this stuff that was like not even seen in uh, main, uh, you know in Playboy. So he, I kind of admire him for that, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, so my my aunt was in the magazine in 1983, and then she was on the in Penthouse again in 19 I mean 2013 at the age of 53. Oh wow! So. Yeah, you know, she her name was uh, her name was Brigitta Cimbarole. Okay, I, and, will, uh, I will not yeah. even try to attempt that, but I will let you make sure <laughs> you say that. <laughs> the same family name as mine, you know. So um, yeah, she um, they, that really set uh, such like an exciting like that really got. I mean, my family was like already well versed in what she does, and uh, my dad's side of the family is really supportive. They they love what I do. They they think it's so exciting. They always ask me about LA and about celebrities, and they're so supportive and they're very like open minded people. So, we're all Italian, you know. Yeah, we are exactly. just you know just cool loving thing, people. Yeah, the cool thing about it is that you you have this support from them, and you know, in January 2016, you were named Penthouse Pen of the Month. And later in, in 2017, mm-hmm. you came up to be the runner-up at Penthouse Pen of the Year. Like, what yeah. was that, like, what is that that thought process? Like, the excitement, taking through the emotions of that. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a lot of a lot of emotions. Like, a lot of um, just overwhelming was like the really emotion that I felt, and, and overall like pure just pure excitement. Like, Penthouse has sent me to so many places. They sent me to Australia. They've sent me. Uh, to Europe, they've sent me, um, you know, they sent me back, they sent me back to my, like, San Francisco when I was on the cover, uh, just, like, as, like, a homecoming, and I, that was, that felt so amazing to me, like, I, I mean, there's things that they've done for me that I'll, I'll always be grateful for, you know, it's just, it's like a, like a deep, a deep in my heart, you know, the key. <laughs> And then how did this lead to the adult business? I mean, obviously, I guess you were already kind of semi like in the adult business i mean if you're doing you know or, you know hardcore and erotic type food I, yeah, I was already doing it you know because you know sometimes in the industry like you hear different things from different people and you know i have to admit sometimes like in the beginning of my career i'm not always wasn't always sure who because they say oh you can't do that unless you do this or you can't you have to do that if you you have to be in porn. You don't have to be in porn. Like, oh no, they'll never do that if you're in porn. Like, you know, just you you hear so many. I I heard so many mixed things from different people that I really just had to keep my eyes and ears open for an opportunity. And um, the person who um, got me in touch with Penthouse was actually a, a girl, a girlfriend of mine from Playboy, because uh, she she didn't uh, was it didn't interest her to do that. Uh, so she you know passed the contact on to me. And Penhouse kind of took a chance on me and the photographer. And I guess we just together with the pictures, I guess, just really, really impressed them. And then, you know, they made me pet and cover and, you know, all the good things that came along with it. And um, I, I really, once I was in with them, I really pursued it a lot because I was just so enthusiastic about the company. I wanted to be involved with every single little thing. You know, I wanted to be just like, like Layla Sin, you know, I looked up to her so much, you know, <laughs> she's such a wonderful girl, you know, and um, shout out to Layla. Yeah, <laughs> so, Layla's um, awesome. Ah, she's amazing. She's amazing. And um, yeah, it's just been yeah, just I've met so many amazing people and just had so many great experiences, and and we and we keep going. So the transition into doing film uh, seemed like it was pretty seamless for you, but was there any kind of nerves or anything? Oh yeah, okay. So 
I, I was doing like, I was already doing like webcam. So, you know, I was doing the modeling. And the thing is, I wasn't doing this because I'm like, well, I guess the next step is this. Oh, I was, I was just so comfortable with it. You know, I was just, I, I didn't feel coerced or forced. I felt like ready. I'm just like, yeah, I'm cool with that. Oh, I'm cool with that. I'm cool. So I, I never like pushed my own boundaries. And, and plus I, 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 I saw it as an overall career and an overall, you know, like I was like, you know, way to, way to grow and build myself. And that's the direction I want to go. <laughs> so, um, I remember I was like, I actually did a, a boy girl before I ever did girl girl. So I think that's kind of rare that, that people just jump into boy girl, but I was like ready for the dick. I mean, ready for the man uh, part. Sorry, wait, can we cuss? Yeah, yeah, there's no censorship. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. No, I think okay. it's cute that you're, like, know. pre-censoring yourself. I'm like, go oh, for okay. it, girl. Like, you were fucking on camera. Like, yes. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, say it how it is. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I, I just I, I love I love uh, porn and I love watching it ever since like from a really like uh, small age but I I'm just like so captivated by it and I was like ready for that dick like fucking like ready like strap me up like with a rocket I'm ready to go <laughs> and so um yeah and I I had somebody like you know like agree they agreed to do my first scene like even though I've like never done porn <laughs> and then um it was browsers for browsers and I I remember my scene was with Eric Everhard. And I, I was so excited for like three weeks. I had to wait. And I was like, oh my gosh, I couldn't like sleep. I was so excited. And I saw him at a nightclub and I'm like, oh my God, you're Eric Everhard. And he's like, oh yeah, that's me. And I'm like, I'm going to fuck you in two weeks. He's like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, I haven't ever seen like you. He's like, wait, who are you? I've never seen you before. And then he's like, and that, that even built it up even more for me. Cause I'm like, oh my God, he's so nice. He's so cool. I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to feel it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I love I love how you said that you, you, you convince somebody like they agreed to do a scene with you. Like there had to be convincing here. Like who who has uh, to be convinced? Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> well, um I met I met an, an agent at EVN who um uh you know, she she uh gave me a lot of good like female advice uh in the beginning, but then you know, once I did penthouse I was just like so focused on that. I I didn't have an agent ever since then. But, uh, yeah, right? <laughs> she, she had to convince them those big numbers for me. <laughs> yeah, I will let you know. My people will call you people, and we'll figure out whether or not I want to bone you. Like, I'm going to get a pay cut on that one. You know? Like, you ain't got to convince me. I should be paying you. You know? So. Um, Aw, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you mentioned that, you, you know, you – you, you were a fan of porn from a very young age. What is the, the earliest uh, interactions that you had with porn? Like, what got you excited and interested in it? Like, were you sneaking, you know, dirty magazines? Like, were you watching, you know, stuff online? Like, The first pornography, I, I guess if you could call it pornography, I've ever witnessed was um, my, my aunt was in real estate. And she was like renting out, showing this beautiful house in the Malibu Hills. And I, I remember looking in the halls, and there was this like this um, like Oriental like artwork of like the the like I think it's Japanese, and, and the guy has like like a big like mean looking dick, and he's like 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 raping the girl, and the girl looks it looks all scared, and there's like these geishas like watching like all horrified, and then. But I just remember I was like, whoa, what's that? And I was, I was probably like eight years old, <laughs> eight or nine. Yeah, yeah, I was probably like eight. But I just remember looking and I'm like, what is that? And I never asked her either because I kind of felt like maybe I wasn't supposed to be looking at it. But I'm like, yeah, but it's up in this lady's house. Like, it's all just laid out here for us to see. So <laughs> I guess whatever, you know? <laughs> so every time, every time I like an extra long time to walk in the hallways because it was just like lined with it. And I'm just like trying to figure out like, what is that? Like, because each one was different, you know. Um, I should I should look up what it's called to give an accurate depiction. So, all you all you amazing listeners who hopefully are still listening to me, who <laughs> <laughs> you're still listening talking. to me, please, thanks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese like cartoon um porn or like <laughs> Jap googling now Japanese Gonzo cartoon porn and see what happens. Yeah, it's pretty Gonzo. There was no lead up. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what, and, um, yeah, that was like my first exposure to, to something like that. And then after that, um, my you know my my friend's uh, mom had like a Playboy channel, and we'd like watch it all the time. And I just remember like I saw like Jenna Jameson's like 
the masseuse. Like I saw like a lot of the shows on the Playboy channel, like, like the morning show, which I, which I later ended up being on <laughs> a bunch of times. <laughs> so funny how this is Most people are watching like today's show. Good morning, America. We're watching Playboy TV early in the morning. <laughs> mm-hmm, that's how I get my news. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I know that like, was like real sex too. That was really cool. Cause you get to see like real people, like, like real people, like like in middle America and stuff, like having sex and how they do it, and like I think that's the kind of porn I watch now. Actually, I, I watch like real real people, like and you know it's funny because you know pe- people like me and they're just like, oh, we love to watch you, and I'm like, I love to watch you. <laughs> I love to watch really just like really like um real couples, like real people. It's like no 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 seriously, I love watching you. Can you guys just start fucking right in front of me? You know? What? <laughs> <laughs> just kind of just shock them, you know. <laughs> That'd be nice. Now, Maybe I'll, I'll do that here. <laughs> yeah, and you never know because you could do this. He's at these conventions like Exotica and everything. You were just at Exotica in New Jersey, and you know, I got I got to meet you up there. Like, oh yeah, the same. Like now, yeah, what, I, like what, what what kind of um girl were you growing up like in high school and everything? Obviously, like. You had already had like this idea what porn was. Were you like promiscuous? Like, were you? What was dating life um, for you? Like, what what kind of well, student were you? Well, okay, so I I I lost my virginity when I was like fourteen to like a much older guy, and then and then my family moved uh, to a different town. So I kind of like started all over again because I, I felt like I felt like um like shame, you know, I like like I was just like ah fresh start, you know, because <laughs> um you know I wanted to feel like you know fresh. So I kind of like um just was like a cock tease, I think all through high school. Like I never like let anybody stick it in um, or finger bang me. But I I went on a lot of dates. Like I went to prom like four times, and I <laughs> and I so I mean I, and I was like I was just you know like nice to people, um outgoing and funny but i really um being in the classroom like gives me like um anxiety sometimes so the places i really excelled at was like english and like, writing like something more creative um but like yes other things like give me like bad anxieties and i would just like daydream a lot so you were you were kind of like the tease then in high school now were, were but, all the yeah. guys trying to like get with you like uh, I think I mean like, should have got frustrated after a while and just like beat off, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I, was, uh, I was like, oh, that's good. Like, oh, but, so yeah. I mean, I kind of wish I could get all the experiences I could have had in high school, but um, you know, I don't feel like those guys like really deserve that. So, <laughs> you know? and now you get to live all those experiences on film and share it with the rest of the world, so it's even better. Yeah, haha. Ha. Take that, you guys. <laughs> Now, do you keep touch with anybody, like guys in high school, like that note now I secretly have hit you up on social media, like, hey, remember? Oh, we yeah. Were... How is um, that? Is yeah. that weird? No, 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 not at all. Like, um, so I couldn't make it to my 10-year-old, my 10-year high school reunion because I was hosting a pool party, a topless pool party at the Sapphire in Vegas. And I was like, oh, shit, oh, shit, it's my 10-year anniversary, my 10-year reunion. So I, I sent the class of, I sent the, the, the class of, about eight, I sent them a message on their Facebook, and the, it was it closed though with my clothes on, <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh, I hope you guys having fun, you know, go Baylor's, and I'll see you at the next one, you know." Um, and everybody was really nice, you know. <laughs> but um, some, sometimes I get messages from people like in high school, like, "Hey, you know, me and my girl love to watch your stuff, you know. If you ever, if you ever come back to town, you know." <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> it's nice to know I have options." <laughs> <laughs> So, you're doing the porn thing, and, like, life is great and everything, and I noticed that not only that, but, like, you have done other things. So, before we get into all these questions that fans ask me, I want to know about Hot Sauce Holiday. Oh! That's my man! <laughs> <laughs> so, tell tell everybody about Hot Sauce Holiday, and that's not, you know, what may have happened, you know, at Thanksgiving when somebody put too much hot sauce on the turkey, but... <laughs> <laughs> what, what is, how'd you get into all of this? Okay, so I just want to encourage everybody right now to follow Hot Sauce Holiday on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, they we just came out with a slew of these really funny, amazing uh, clips promoting our show. Um, so I started performing 
performing with them when I first came to LA, I just went to one of their shows and I was like, these are my people. It's like a cabaret rock and roll, like, like Queen, Freddie Mercury, Prince, with, with like Meatloaf and like, um, like, um, like Adam Ant and just like, all, it's just like so unique and so cool. And the guys were just like really cool, like really stylish. And then um, me and Boogie Whips, the lead singer, we became in right away because um, he's like a, has a, like a larger than life personality. And, and I like crazy people. Like I invite crazy to the party. Like I'm, I'm about it, you know. So, <laughs> um, and then I started kind of performing with them very often. And then we wrote. Uh, I was like depressed one day because I didn't. I was like, you know, I can't really play an instrument. I can't. I can't really. I don't feel very talented next to all you guys because you're all so much more talented. I feel, um, I don't know. I, I want to write a song, but I'm getting stuck. And um, so uh, Rambles, the guitarist, he sat with me all night. And we wrote like a seven minute rock opera. And um, then all the other guys in the band came in and they added their parts too. And we just literally were left with this like epic, like amazing song. Like that's just like blows everybody's mind. <laughs> <laughs> and so we took we we've always thought that the show was better for the stage um not for like these little bars that they were playing at not that not that the like bars and pubs aren't aren't great we're super grateful but i'm like no we really need the room you know because we're like really we're literally like running on top of tables while we're trying to perform the show <laughs> <laughs> make sure the energy. insurance policy is up like literally like knocking over people's drinks like it's just like <laughs> annoying you don't um, want I this and like, just kick their drink <laughs> right right but we had no choice you know we had no room <laughs> so um i i actually um i i it was my uh idea to get them the gig at el Cid at theater in silver like and their amazing uh manager andy uh -huh, shout out um <laughs> really helped in boogie Whip, we really all put it into fruition together um and that's how it kind of came, that's how it, that's how it first like bloomed to be. And uh, now, yeah, we perform once a month at El Cid Theater. Well, the next time we're performing is December 9th. Um, so if anybody's in Los Angeles, come see me and uh, Hot Sauce Holiday perform. And, and the show is called Sugar on Top. And it's like, it has sex, it has drugs, it has rock and roll, and it has like, um, surprises. It's it just like it has uh, amazing food at this venue. Like it has everything. Come to come to be entertained. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. I mean, I'm going just just to see you. You know what I mean? Like I could, you know, all the extra stuff is just extra. You know, sugar on top. You know, like it's. Just, ah, yes. You know, it's just... but can you please? Can you watch the 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 trailer that they that we put together? I'm so proud of it. It's it's on my it's on my Instagram. Uh, which is Ulala la Christiana, but it's also on um, the Hot Sauce Holiday Instagram too. I'm so proud of it. Like we, they did a really a really good job. They put yeah, together really definitely. Fun. We'll have to tweet that out, and we'll post it on MixMasterV.com. Like everybody will check that out. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'll, send, I'll have to send you the link. I want I want everybody's opinion of it, and yeah, I, everybody who supports me and people who come up to me at like Exotica and um. Uh, and ABN, like when people come up to me and they're like, "Hey, like I, I saw you're in a band, Hot Sauce Holiday." I'm like, "I'm I'm so impressed." I'm just like, "Whoa!" Because I need to talk to them about. I love talking about sex, but I'm just like, "Wow!" Like you, I now we get to talk about sex and music, and um, yeah, I, I love when people are into it because it makes me feel like I'm not uh, alone. <laughs> <laughs> not alone. You are never <laughs> alone, believe me. I mean, looking at all of your Instagram and Twitter followers, you'll never be alone. Um, oh. You might not be left alone, you know? So, like, that's that's a, a possibility, okay. too. And it's, it's kind of like a weird segue, but talking about being left alone. So, tell me, who's your favorite pizza delivery company? <laughs> oh, God. Um I, you know, I'm probably just saying like um, round table or like <laughs> honestly, I would rather eat, I would just like I would rather eat a pizza off the floor than have Domino's ever again. Now tell me, <laughs> take me through this story because this was new to me. I didn't even know about this, and then I saw you know, like this link come through that you know that Tanya and shout out Tanya Tate because Tanya is is just amazing. Oh, Amazing and, woman. Yes, and she like she you know gave me this link, and I'm like looking at, it, I'm like, holy shit! Like this dude like really had the balls to do this. So explain what exactly happened. 
Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I've seen, it seems like it's a whole other life ago, but really it was not, not very long ago. I was in Wisconsin and I, you know, there's, there's nothing to, I, there's nothing that I know of to eat out there. So I'm like, okay, the next best thing I could just do is like order a pizza. And so I was just in my room chilling and I ordered it like vegetarian pizza. And even on, even on all of the sites, like on, um, on Fox News and on like Washington Post, and they they were like talking shit about the toppings that I ordered. Because <laughs> like, that was like, the you know, big that was the big problem out of this whole story, right? Right. The fact that I got pineapple on my pizza, and people like respect me less. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, really. So, um, you know, the pizza. You know, so he came. You know, I and I was just I was really just wearing like like a sweater and like you know, no, I wasn't dressed up or anything, and I um. I had the money counted out plus the tip. I gave him the money. I took my, took my pizza, closed the door. And then like a couple minutes later, I get a text from, from somebody that said, Hey, and I'm like, there's a number I don't know. So I'm like, who's this? He's like, it's Chris. I'm like, who? Chris who? He's like, oh, I, I was just there. I, I do- dropped off your pizza. And I'm like, uh, what do you want? And I felt really weird that he was contacting me because I'd never been contacted after like my pizza was delivered. <laughs> And he was like, "Oh, I was just gonna see if you wanted, if you wanted some two hundred dollars. Never mind, you just wanted those bougie bitches. What the fuck or something?" <laughs> and I was like, "Wait, wait, wait! Was he just trying to like solicit for me for only two hundred dollars?" And all the dominoes you could ever want. Yeah, well, I didn't even get. I no, they didn't even offer me a free pizza at first. They just offered me street cinnamon twirls because I, I called. I called the uh, the store. I was like, hey, I, um, I don't feel right about what happened just now. Like, your employee just texted me, like, I need to, I need to send you a screenshot of the tag. And she's like, oh, okay. And and um, then she's like, oh no, that's not okay. Okay, well, we could just, we, we could bring you some cinnamon twists. And I'm like, uh, no, I don't want cinnamon twists. I don't want somebody coming over here again. Like, send me cruise number two. <laughs> another person with another phone no. number. It's like, no, I, I need to talk to corporate. I need to talk to whoever owns the franchise. Like, this is, I don't know, this is like, this isn't okay. Like. Like, like this actually became like a real serious issue. It was you know for I mean, yeah, no, I mean I'm laughing yeah, here at first because you know it sounds kind of funny, but then like this oh, is like this is serious shit. Yeah, because it's like it's like, I I felt like my privacy was violated, and a lot of you know and I just think since because I just happened to to be a porn I, with the you know say I'm a porn star like I, since I just happened to be one. Then, it, then the lines gets blurred. Then there's, oh, well, she was, she must have been sexy. She must have asked for it. She must have winked at him, which made him think it was okay to do that. Oh, she just mad because he only offered her two hundred. What a bitch! But I'm like, no, this is not any of that. It had to do with it. It's just the fact that he violated my privacy. Like he could have done that to anyone, you know. It's, mm-hmm. now, even if you, it was not know- me. Do you think he knew, like, knew who you were, or did he just, you know? That's the thing. I, I, there's no way I could. Even, I, there's no way I could ever know. Because it's like I didn't. I don't think I looked like I don't. Okay, I don't look like a troll or anything. But I don't. I didn't. I didn't look like I just walked off of set. Like uh-huh. I wasn't like. I just looked like a like a just like you know like um just like Regular a normal person. day. Yeah. Like yeah, like just like a normal day at the mall. Like you know, with my hair up, like, cause, like a little sweater. So we don't even like, know like if he sweater. knew who you were and what you did. He may have just I, seen you know a hot yeah. chick and was like, hey. I just thought it was a hot chick because I'm like. Really in Wisconsin at a hotel, like how likely do you think it would be to see a porn star? Like, you know what I mean? So I don't think he. And then a lot of a lot of girls ask me, "Well, oh, was he cute?" I'm like, it doesn't even matter. Like, <laughs> um, but he didn't get he didn't get in trouble. He didn't get fired. He didn't get reprimanded. Um, yeah, they didn't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm reading like an article. I mean, it, it obviously it was a hot enough topic for it to become you know become mainstream and get uh, you know recognition from. Fox News and other outlets. Oh, yeah, I was I was right there with Stormy Daniels. I was like, wow, this is so great. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, at the time though, I was stressed because um, a lot of like lawyers were trying to talk to me. Um, a lot of people were just like, no, like you you could sue them. But I was like, you know, but, you know, it, it just seemed so like a lot of trouble. What have you decided that, at like, this point? Like, are you have you just kind of just like moved on from it, or are you still? Well, I totally, I've totally moved on, but I still like Domino. I was like, you get sure to go fuck yourself. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. You know, um, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's a weird one. That's the first time I've heard anything like that. I, I tweeted them. I was like, 
I was like, oh, yeah, Domino's, like, is this okay for your employees to do? Because I wasn't not to get anybody's attention. No one was listening to me when I was emailing them. And I'm like, okay, I'll just tweet it out. You can't, you can't delete that. So then, um, but then that's when all the opinions came in. And it, it got a little overwhelming. I'm not going to lie for a second. When, when it was on Fox News, that's when all the hate, that's when all the hate came in. And I was like, oh, I shouldn't be reading this. <laughs> you know, because it really, it's supposed to get, get into your brain, you know? So then I, I talked to Stormy Daniels, like one of her friends, and she's like, yeah, don't read it. She doesn't read it. She just like laughs, you know? And I'm like, okay, I need to be like that. So, um, yeah, then eventually kind of just faded away. Yeah, I mean, it is Fox News, so you can kind of expect to get some kind of hate. From uh, yeah, 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 exactly. It's just it's just their audience. and it, But just the things that they were saying to me, they were just like, just like, wow, fuck, you stupid bitch. You just want him to get fired because he makes, like, all this crazy shit. I was like, He's a damn. fucking pizza delivery guy. Like, what is, like, what does that benefit your career by getting him fired? I, yeah, I, I, I don't, I, like, I don't need him to get fired. I just need him to, like, like, make their policies stricter on, like, taking clients' phone numbers after the shit's delivered. And I'm that's sure all, they probably know, like, already, he probably already signed off on, a, you know, like, a restriction policy. You know, like, you can't take that information it's just you know it's just exactly. yeah i feel like but they i don't even know if they have any policies against like but you know so it's they weird after to. i dude was after, just after a horny I, turd after I, <laughs> I yeah after i tweeted that a lot of a lot of women came came forward and were like oh my god like oh, the same kind of thing happened to me and they they were they were sending me and tagging dominoes screenshots of their own experiences and some of them were even creepier some of them were like hey i want to come over right now and just fuck like like you like just really like really aggressive and just really inappropriate i was like wow and she's like yeah then dom doesn't do anything about it either that is so weird and creepy but and i apologize <laughs> like, you had to go through something like that you know like, yeah so I like, like watch out for dominoes because it's just like after i posted that story a lot of people came forward and were sending me their screenshots too and i was posting them so it's like it's kind of like a thing i didn't realize how much of a thing it was until i said something about it and sometimes that's what it takes it takes one person to come forward and say hey i this is what happened to me and if it's happened to me i can pretty much damn guarantee it's happened to other people like and it'll continue to happen which is the the sad and fucked up thing about all of it is that you know there's there, I'm sure when you download the app or you call them and everything like there, you're consenting to your privacy. And I'm sure when this guy got a job, he probably signed off some legal mumbo jumbo saying that he wouldn't do what he did and he violated it. The fact that Domino's doesn't own up to it is just kind of bougie. Yeah, in his yeah, own words. yeah, yeah. They're they people are sucked anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so any pizza, any pizza companies out there? who are listening to this podcast, feel free to send her like some free pizza, you know, like to make me, yeah. Like, I know it's all that. I know it's okay. So I know that there's, so I know that I could trust somebody again. Yes. It's like, it's like being in a relationship, you know, Domino's fucked up and you know, now she needs, yeah. a, she needs a new pizza boo, you know? So I really, oh, I really do need a new pizza boo. You're right. <laughs> Any pizza boo is the same. <laughs> so are you ready to get into some of these questions from fans because i got so oh, many questions so there are so oh, many questions from fans and they were dming me and i if some of these questions even the ones with the dick pics there are some pretty good questions in here so, okay 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 so tell me how the dick was now <laughs> yeah i won't this here is probably creepier than the fucking dominoes like i don't know yeah. i'd rather had dominoes text me than some of these ugly dick pics but um <laughs> Like some of these yeah, things, I like I don't know what like what the proper name is for a dick doctor, but some of you guys may want to inquire because some of the shit looks like just... big. No, they're just they look deformed. I mean, I'm not oh. I'm not hey, an expert in dicks, but hey, maybe you know. they thought you were a doctor and they were just like, "Hey, dude, like, what do you think? Like, does this look normal? You know, like maybe they just trusted you, or maybe or maybe they thought I was gonna see it." Yeah, I guess that's what it is. I guess he wanted me to oh, pass like, it along to you. <laughs> Oh my, that's really that's really considerate of you. Thanks for sending me your pics. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm not an expert in dicks. You know what I mean? I look at mine. I know what mine looks like. I <laughs> see them in porn, but I oh, oh, sure she'll she'll know what's up. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the like the Simon Cow of judging dicks. You know, it's, this is not America's Got I'm Talent. Like, 
Abdul. Like, I think everybody's is great. I'm like the Paula Abdul judging dicks. I think everybody's is great. <laughs> Well, then I will gladly forward all these over to you when you're bored one night. If you want to just judge them on a scale of 1 to 10, you know. Oh, thank you. They, they all come back for the next season. <laughs> <laughs> so the first guy wants to know, um, when you got into porn, what was um, some of your, your fears and what are some of the things that you were excited about getting to do once you got into the business? Hmm. I was really, I was really excited to, to shoot with a lot of companies. I, I mean, there's still a lot of companies that I haven't shot with yet that I still want to. Like, um, honestly, really, like, I was really excited to just be like, I really wanted to like suck like a beautiful woman and make her squirt, and I wanted to just like get manhandled by a really like, you know, like guy who really knows what he's doing. And with a really big dick, and I wanted to like have a lot of sexual experiences. I wanted to have threesomes, orgies. I wanted to fuck like multiple men at the same time. Like, um, I like I know I wanted like, um, like I've had I've had BBCs in my private life, but I wanted like BBCs like on camera. Like it's just like like a, like a whole world. Like, and you know, porn is amazing. It's like the possibilities are endless. Like this, the fantasy is like there's no limit. You know, and I have a really active imagination, so like. Um, and that's what I was like really excited about. Um, and, um, and also too, I guess, um, just getting the exposure and getting exposed to new opportunities because I am, you know, I'm the adult actress, you know, and I'm a, a face that people recognize. And I like that. I like, I like when people um, recognize me and it makes me feel good about my, about the work I've done. Um, but my fears, okay, honestly, like one of my fears was like, Oh, like, I don't know how it's going to be like dating. Like, I don't know if like, you know, guys like, you know, you know, it's like, I don't know if I get a boyfriend or like a husband. Cause like, you know, I'm such a dirty whore, but it's <laughs> 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 a dirty whore. But, um, you know what? I'm, it, it really actually uh, had me raise my standards, uh, with, with men because, um, I can't get with a man who's insecure or jealous or, um, he has to really look at me like a goddess and like you'd be proud of me for all the dicks I could take and all the things that I've done and how free I am and how at the end of the day, I'm a really like, I'm just like, like a nice, cool, like sweet girl, Italian girl, you know, we're really at the end of the day. Like, so, um, I'm like, yeah, he'll love me for that. <laughs> so yeah. So those are the fears I had though. In the beginning, I was like, Oh yeah, I'm never going to get a boyfriend. Okay. Well, I guess I'm just, gonna be single forever but but now I'm now as I'm like more used to it and more mature I'm like you know there's definitely men out there who are very secure with who they are who could definitely handle it now it's, yeah. it's cool that you say a lot of things because you kind of segued way across across like three or four questions other people were asking so um, one of the other guys that tweeted in and he wants to know like what do you look for in a guy in a relationship and are you currently you know involved in a relationship like how is dating life like for you Okay, so I'll just answer that uh, first by saying um, dating in L.A. is um, really difficult. Los Angeles is not the place where anybody should come to find a relationship because nobody here is looking to settle down. Um, so just, that's, that's just straight about the, out the gate. And that's, you know, I live in Los Angeles. So, um, but it does happen. But um, for me, like, yeah, like, I, you know, I, I go on dates. Um, but, you know, how, how a man could really – lock down a dream girl like a fantasy girl like a porn girl a, a penthouse pet a playboy model you really have to be very confident with yourself and you have to be honest with yourself um, and you have to be honest with yourself about why you're getting jealous and is it is it her problem or is it really your problem because a lot of men get like when i started feeling them getting jealous and insecure and when it started to change me I immediately have to break away because I, you know, women like, like if you want to get with like a, like being with a woman like us is like being strapped to a rocket. You know, you have either get on and enjoy the ride or get off because it's going no matter what. So if you know, if a guy out there can handle it, um, then yeah, you have a, you have a great chance. <laughs> you know, you just have to like, let me be me and treat me like a goddess and, she, yeah, that's really, that's what I'm into, you know, <laughs> and then, yeah, and then in return, I'm very generous. <laughs> and, and you know what you signed up for when I start dating. Exactly. You know? so some, some guys, you know, I've, I've, of course, I've been there where they're like, 
oh, like, you know, I thought you'd stop. I'm like, stop for what? Like, you know, you're not paying my bills. Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time a guy was like, oh, my God, you, you shoot at your house? I'm like, well, yeah, where do you think I'm going to go? I live here. He's like, but I hang out here. I'm like, yeah, but you don't live here. You don't pay no bills. Like, Get out! <laughs> That's just, like, I'm, all, yeah, like, I'm, I'm an independent woman, too, which, which a lot of women are. So, you know, they, don't be threatened by a by a successful career woman with a job. <laughs> now, do you, like what type of guys are you attracted to? Is there a certain look, a certain style? Um, because let's be I honest, like, that's why we have apps like Tinder. Nobody reads the you know the little bio. Like we just judge off a of photo, which is not always well, okay, the right okay, thing to do. Not, but you know, I mean, there's okay, gotta be a, a look that you like. Okay. Here's an issue that I have with the hot guys on Tinder. This is why I, like, kind of give up. Because they kind of, like, want me to, like, chase them. And I'm like, okay, no, I really, I really, I honestly, like, that's cute. But, like, I do not have time. Like, <laughs> so, like, let, like, what the fuck is that? Let's get it popping. Like, come on. Or, or you know, bye-bye. Because it's like, I, I don't have time to sit here and, like, chase you and, like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, like, let's get it going or next. <laughs> so that's the problem that, you know they want to like for their own ego I'm like I'm not here for that you know? <laughs> but um I like um honestly I really like guys who like I said um like I like guys who um still like open the door for me like help me like you know who who realize like that being being a woman and you know being me is like it's not it's not easy not not everybody could do it I, I just I really I, I think really like his, his love and adoration for me is like what really turned me on to him. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you love me? I love me too. All right, well, <laughs> we have something really good in common. <laughs> I like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> well, first thing in common, we both love me. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but I, I want him to treat me because I know I know my heart. I know I I will treat like my man like a, you know like a god. You know, so there's no question there, but. I just have to be like, just you know, I have to just be treated well. Um, the first thing I look for physically is a guy has to uh, clean under his fingernails and and clip them. They have to be nice manicured nails. If I see a guy with like dirt under his nails or or jaggedy nails, nope, bye bye, sorry. Because all I think about is your like your dirty wizard hands going inside my vagina and that are already it's, I can feel a use connection coming on and I just I do not have time for that neither does any other woman so uh, like you just have to like respect all the parts of yourself that are going to touch this woman you know really when you think about it when you guys before you guys leave you like you'd be like you know respect the parts about me that are going to be touching her or that I want to be touching her so it's like okay let's see did I clean my nails okay scrub 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 with a brush okay brush with hot water soap you know like okay trim my pubes yeah I guess it could get cleaned up down there she might be down there later just you have to take care of yourself like as if you know you want her to you know as if she was going to touch these places you know hygiene is important to me um and also like you know good good manners is important to me I don't like men who are like cheap or stingy or like who don't tip or like who don't you know like who don't tip valets and who, or who don't like um tip waiter or who treat like the waiter really poorly i hate that or offer 200 bucks and a pizza oh. i mean just to, just for dinner i'm down <laughs> <laughs> but, no, no, yeah I mean... you could watch <laughs> you could watch <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> now uh, another person want to know are you like are you into women as far as relationships oh, oh my god that, um i honestly like i i really have a soft spot for women like something comes over me when i'm around a woman who i have incredible chemistry with it's like a magnet like i just i love being around her i love touching her i love smelling her like and i'm very sexually attracted to women i i am very sexually turned on by by women I just really I really love beauty and um if a guy wants to like you know watch me enjoy that that's really great but um I've I've, probably, I've sort of been in a relationship with a woman it was a three-way relationship so I was actually dating her and her boyfriend mm -hmm. like, it was which couple. I heard it's is probably... like all the rage now I heard well the couple I did it first so I, I really applaud everybody for like you know um copying me <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> I really applaud everybody for like you know looking up, <laughs> but no, um, yeah, I, I did it when I was twenty one, and it was 
one of the greatest experiences I've, I've ever had in my dating life. And um, they both taught me so much and I loved it. It was like having a girlfriend and a boyfriend. It was amazing. Cause like I would get like double attention. It was really cool. Like they would take me on dates and they helped me a little bit through school and the sex was great. So it was, I, I mean, if you're, if you're down and you don't have any motives to like fuck up, fuck up the couple, then go for it. Because I, I rest assured knowing that they were together and that made me feel secure. That's a part of the relationship I really liked. It was like, I know I'm sleeping alone, but I know that they're together and that's what makes me feel good, you know? So, I mean, that's how I felt with it. So um, I feel like those were the right reasons because um, they said that being with me made them actually get closer together and made their relationship stronger. Dude, look at you, you know, bring it yeah, together. Get you yeah, a, yeah, a Nobel like Peace Prize. Oh my god, thank you. <laughs> so, Greg, you, I'll thank you first. Yeah, well, well, we'll, we'll nominate you for the next one, you know, and be like, look. This is, can you go, can the listeners do that? I guess they can. I don't know how that process works, but I'm totally down to start that um, campaign. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you. Amazing. Because then I could give a speech on Threpples, like, you know, like the three way couples. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. You yeah. Know, you could be the uh, spokeswoman okay. for that. Yeah, I think it's about time we have a spokeswoman, and I would definitely love to take that role on. I will do it well. <laughs> so you also mentioned all back there. You're just talking about uh, like doing BBC and everything. And one guy, he's the one who had decided to send me a dick pic, and he was like, "Are you into black guys?" And decided, you know what? If you're not, I'm gonna convince you because I'm gonna send the DJ a big black cock picture. And that's oh my gosh, gonna... thank you. Thank you for thinking of me while you were spending that. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, yeah I, I, I love, I love black men. There's, whew, yeah, I remember like, yeah, my first BBC was just like, I, I was like, yeah, I see what this is about. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and I, I love watching um, interracial porn, and I love, I love watching, um, uh, yeah, I love it and participating. But I can't wait for Duke to do my first scene. I'm just like on this like long waiting list. But I've, I'm obsessed with BBC. I'm I'm so curious how much my body could take. Like I went <laughs> and like you know only the BBCs could really bring it. Like you, like no one else can. You know. Now, how big <laughs> is too big? Um, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I haven't. I mean, honestly, the first, okay, the first time I uh, had a BBC, like my private life, I I think I I felt like. I'm like, whoa, this is, like, I, after I really felt, like, different than I'd ever felt in my life. I was just, like, I call my girlfriend who loves who loves BBC, and I'm like, am I going to die? Am I going to feel like this for the rest of my life? She's like, oh, that feeling will go away. And I was like, but I want it again. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, wow, like, it just, like, really changed things. I was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, I was just really, um, yeah, I'm impressed. With, I was just impressed with myself, and. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> was give yourself more. a round of applause. You, you handled it. You know, you took it. You know, girls, you just so many, and like, I just look so amazing, and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to be that girl one day, <laughs> and, and show all of you. <laughs> so, what is what is your ultimate scene that you want to shoot that you have not shot yet? Okay, if I could have like my dream scene, it would def it would just like honestly it would be like everybody in my industry and like I just go through them all like <laughs> and like well for everybody's like fucking in this room at the same time and then I'm like just going through them all. I think if we should get the porn industry together. We should all do this. We should just get everybody together and get us in a big ass room mansion or something with like couches and shit and then go at it and just all fuck each other. Like I'm seriously down. <laughs> 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 Because there's so many people, like, I want to work with, and I'm like, well, we could do it all at the same time. Like, that'd be great. If we could all just make our schedules all work, you know, like, we could do this shit. You hear that? You hear that? Uh, browsers, or are you, you know, like, with who, uh, <laughs> new sensation, who's going to get it first? <laughs> Digital playground? Because <laughs> I'm like, so, when I see that they do, like, the browser, like, you know, they do the houses where they're all together fucking, I'm like, oh, how can I go to this party? It looks like, amazing. Where, where is this house at? Can I put this in my GPS? Like, where are you at? I'll be over right now. <laughs> yes, Uber driver, take me there. You want to join? You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, yeah, for it's it's weird it's shit like this for why people at Domino's are texting you, you know, like. Um, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> well, maybe yeah. <laughs> what is? 
kind of production value do you think you're going to get for $200? I'm not really sure, but. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, that, that might have been, that's at least like two months in tips for that guy, you know, like. Oh, really? No, I feel bad. <laughs> don't feel bad. He's a scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. He deserves it. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. He, actually, nothing ever happened to him, so whatever. He's just like, yeah, you know, he's, he's still doesn't. He's jerking off to this podcast right now, so it's all good, you know. Oh, that's not ranch. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I hope he's jerking off to it because he's listening to my voice and not yours. You know, that would make it even Aww. easier. That's so sweet. Thanks for taking it away from me. I, <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll, I'll take your dirty yeah. domino guy. <laughs> So, uh, wow. let's see. Got, so sweet of you. Yeah, well, you know, that's what I'm here for, you know? It's just, I'm, I'm, all about, I'm all about serving the goddess, you know? Uh, Thank you. Selfless. <laughs> <laughs> so, I am uh, looking at some of these other questions here. Let me see. Let me get a good one here. Celebrity crushes. I always like this one. What celebrity crushes do you have? Well, okay. Um, I have my celebrity crush that I have was Backstreet Boys. And um, Bruno Mars, because I'm, <laughs> I'm like in love with the way that Br Bruno Mars performs, and I've, yeah, he's just like so charismatic and so like effortless, and he's just like a true performer. Like he's a performer that performers look up to, you know. And um, yeah, and Backstreet Boys, because I, I met them in Vegas, and I was like, oh my god, Backstreet Boys. So yeah, those are my celebrity crushes for sure. <laughs> like so, so lame, but no, no, they, they were really cute. <laughs> What what do you like doing in your free time? Do you like how much free time do you get? Like is you know doing the stuff the with music and well, you know porn. Um. Okay. So I don't really run into a lot of free time, but um, like if I'm in another city, um, and I I I'm like, oh, I don't have a shoot today, obviously. I'm like, but and I I like to explore whatever city I'm in. Um, I was recently in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, I went to a football game. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I went to like a frat party. <laughs> like I just explore the city I'm in, like whatever is going on. Um, uh, like I was, yeah. Oh, I was, I was in San Jose uh, not too long ago. We went to like a, a strip club, and like you know, I just, I just went to, I just like like to explore places. I really like to travel. So you know, and I'm, I'm rarely ever home. <laughs> so when I'm home, I'm, I like to like read. Um, stretch. Uh, <laughs> I love to watch TV because I never really get to do it. So <laughs> watching TV is like really like a luxury I don't really get. So when I do, I'm like, oh my god, I just want to watch TV. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's what I'm. Um, yeah, and I also, I mean, I I can't really say like I like to cook because my stove has been out like off for like three months. So it's like you know, because I've been home show right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. My family comes over, I'll be like, oh, no, like, oh, no, yeah, it works. Like, I'm not going to cook you dinner, though. Like, no, let's go out. <laughs> like, wow, your stove looks really clean. Like, wow. Like, yeah, yeah, it, keep it, it doesn't get much action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but also, I'm I'm really involved with, um, like, a, like, an organization called Vice is Nice. Mm -hmm. And um, it's where they donate... Uh, blankets and food and you know money of course to uh help feeding the animals because i'm really really uh, passionate about animals and i've i've always been so i i do things to support that and then i'm like running around with um maybe some of my band members and we're you know working on stuff and i i went to vegas and i i saw two shows and that was really fun so that was like something i did when i was like had a moment to breathe so I've been to all the nightclubs and stuff, but I saw, I saw opium and I saw absinthe, and they were both amazing. Now, when you go out and you say you have time to breathe, do people recognize you? Um, okay, so sometimes my friends – okay, it's normally when we get in the Uber, and they're like, no, he re like for sure he recognized you, for sure. And I'm like, really? I don't think so. I, I never get that vibe, but I'm, I guess I'm pretty – I, I'm not aloof. I don't know if that's the right word, but and then yeah, and then when I went out in San Jose with my friends, they were like, "Oh no, that guy recognized you for sure." But I'm like, um, "Really? Oh, but I did get recognized because I was on the airplane, and he came, and this guy came up behind me when I was walking out the plane. He's like, hey, um, are, are you Christiana Sin?'" And I was like, "Yeah," and he's like, "Oh my 
my gosh, oh my gosh, can we take a picture? And I was like, oh, no, sure. And I was like, oh, thank you so much for coming up to me. It's so sweet of you. Like, I was so happy. And then I told my friend, like, oh, my God, a fan came up to me. I felt so special. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, if you ever see me, like, I, I love taking pictures with people. I never, like, too in a hurry to, like, not stop for, what two seconds and take a picture. Like, so, um, and I, it's really flattering. Yeah. Well, I can say but, um, when you were at Exotica and you had the green neon hair thing, like I didn't even recognize you. Oh, uh, I know. I don't, <laughs> I don't. I'm like I'm just coming off of like the Burning Man, like Groove Cruise, like you know, like. <laughs> so I'm like I'm still gonna exhaust my costumes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to dress up though. I, I like to look for any opportunity I can. But. Yeah, you're right, though. I do hear that sometimes. They're like, oh, I didn't really recognize you. I'm like, oh, why did I go that extreme? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can say for anybody who ever has the opportunity to meet you, she is a complete sweetheart. I can admit that I, like, I was totally, like, nervous when I went to meet you at Exotica. I was like, I, don't, I didn't know what to say. Like, I was actually talking to Tanya. I'm like, I, I, I really want to, like, go up to her and say hello to her. And she's like, oh, just go say hi to her. She's such a sweetheart. Oh, I love her little voice. <laughs> and I'm like, um, hi, uh, I know Tanya. Um, I just wanted to say hello. <laughs> and you totally did, like, brush me off. You did kind of look at me like, are you okay? Like, is something wrong with this oh. guy? <laughs> <laughs> but you were a complete sweetheart so anybody who gets a chance to meet her like don't don't waste the opportunity like i did and be all like nervous because no 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 i i, I really appreciate the, the guy just coming up to me and be like are you christiana sen and like because it's like you see me like you know it's me like and like he did i, I really appreciate his 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 his, his yeah, he just came up right, right up to me and he said like quiet he's like I was like, yeah, like, and I, I was impressed by that, actually. I was like, wow, like, that was really cool. Like, he just, like, walked up to me, like, yeah, of course I'll take a picture. And then, and then I'm like, oh, cute. He's like, I'm going to, like, tell his friend. And, like, you know, I just, like, I don't know, it made me feel good. Like, I was, I felt very flattered. I felt very honored. Now, a um, couple more of these questions before we let you go. Um, what are some of the will not do's in the adult world like what is something you're totally against like not feeling that idea and what's the craziest thing that's ever been offered to you oh um um i mean i nothing involving animals of course uh, yeah nothing nothing like nothing against the law like nothing involving children or animals and mm. and i'm i'm pretty down but um the crazy thing that's been offered to me um, craziest thing has been offered to me. I, I'm I, for some reason I'm remembering something with me having to like lick pee off the floor, but I don't I don't really remember how much I was offered or who it was for. Um, I <laughs> I just remembered I was like wait what like I don't get it. <laughs> like, so definitely not into me. wet play. But I was like, but I was like, but I was like, well, wait, whose pee is it? Or like, where did it come from? I'm like, do I know? Was it there before I got there? Like, yeah, I think I had to see many questions and then I moved on. Like, but, but, um, yeah, no, with that. No, you ask these questions just to confirm it and then be like, yeah, never mind. We're talking way too many questions. Next. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, well, there was, oh, there was another one. Too. Like, okay, um, like, I don't mind squirting. I don't mind. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I I, I did. I did something with pee uh, uh, as a custom video, and I didn't hate it. Like it was, it was. It was all warm. It was nice. But um, I I was like, I was like, I don't know. Like, um, maybe maybe that's something like I I wasn't like really like at the time I didn't understand, and I just thought it was like interesting because I was just like, well, wait, like, but like what floor is it? Like, is it a clean floor already? Like, is it, like I'm, I'm guessing they didn't clean it beforehand. And I, <laughs> I just, I just don't want to get sick. <laughs> um, another thing I will, um, I, uh, I, maybe, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, I, I like glory hole. I like the idea of glory hole porn, but I probably wouldn't do one in real life. But, like, I like the porn, but I wouldn't do it in – I don't think I would do it in real life. Okay. Because it just kind of, kind of seems like 
when something bites you or like, you put an eye out, you know? And... <laughs> yeah, right. I'm saying your ear. We can hear you coming. <laughs> all, I, all I can hear in my head right now is Kevin Hart screaming. I wasn't ready. You know? <laughs> it's just like, put an eye out, you know? <laughs> Those things don't really exist. Like I, I mean, you see. Oh yes! Those? Oh yes! Yes, they do. Yeah, but no, no. But somebody was telling me about one. They, they went to this club in San Francisco, and they stuck their dick in a glory hole. And they, like, when they were eighteen, they went. And I was like, "Wait, did you stick your dick in a glory hole?" What happened? He's like, "Yeah." And, like he, he said, some like some lady with some gloves on, like some like weird yellow like gloves, uh, gave him a hand job, and then. And then you know he came behind the thing, and then the then the lady had an Adam's apple, and then like and then he got scabies. What? Like yeah, like scabies on his dick. But I was like, I guess if like you're like running around like a sex club with like a glove, like I mean catching all of this germs, like not washing it, like I'm sure you could get yeah. So yeah, he, he said he got scabies, and I was like, oh my god, like it seems like. I was like, did you have to suck on a lemon? He's like, no, bitch, that's scurvy. He's like, that's scurvy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, just hearing that just kind of traumatized me. Like, if you guys do it, like, I'm totally not judging, but just be careful with, for people, like, with gloves. You know, don't, you know, just, I, I know they say no gloves and gloves. To me, that's, like, the weirdest, maybe, maybe, creepiest thing. If it's like a fresh glove, then that's okay. But if it's a glove that you don't know where it came How from, you got to you, know. you, you don't get to see anything. That's the creepy thing about exactly. it. Exactly. You got to just, yeah, exactly. That's why like, when he told me that story, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, like that's, you don't know who the fuck is on the other end of that wall or what they're doing or what they look like or, you know, like it's just weird. I mean, to me, it, just, it looked like, you just meant just like how like, cleanly they are <laughs> to be like there's there is two suspect adult bookstores near me near where i live oh oh my gosh oh my gosh i think i think i've been to one because i was looking for a location with somebody for a for a shoot and i was like it, lo it looks like a front like a front for like a porn store like a porn shop but like yes. all the movies all the movies were like from the 90s and shit i was like wait none of these i've never been That's in either I one of these bookstores oh, but oh they my God, always Look creepy you from the, the outside. Oh, you got it. You got to keep going because it gets worse. Okay, so then, so then, as you like, you're walking towards like the back door, and you notice like there's a bunch of lube there. You know, like a sample, but like all the jars are like empty as fuck. And you're like, oh my god, did someone just like squish it in their hand and run to the room, jerk off? Yes. So they do that, and then as like, the more the more deeper we went in, like we were on the tour, like he's like, oh yeah, look, there's this room. The tour. <laughs> It got and like literally there was glory holes. There was like like the yeah. I just I just it was just like really like sticky floors. Like um, I just think like, you know, really. So they all have, like, the they stereotypes have, like, that you think of like what this place would be is true. no. Just like yeah, they, it, it looked like it looked like fitting rooms, like you know like fitting rooms, but without the doors and just with like holes and you know in the, in the middle of the doors. See, that's like, why I never wanted to go in one of these places. Like, like I'm curious because, like, I'm like, is this what everybody says it is? But then, like, you always drive past these places, and you're like, they look creepy as fuck. And every time I see somebody like walking in there, like, I'll just like toot the horn as I'm driving by. You know, like, hey, have fun. You know. I, they they have like parties there. He, he's like, yeah, we have BB, we have BBW parties, we have foot parties. I'm like, foot parties. Like, yeah, like, like you just like people like rub your feet and they give you like money I was like, how much money <laughs> i don't know if Wait, can i make a living off of this like yeah no no you definitely cannot you probably just could make a living like you can just order dominoes <laughs> <laughs> depending who depending where when and where you order it could be worth 200 bucks <laughs> it's not, not everybody has a kink that has like you know it's, they, they gotta do the best with what they can you know <laughs> <They> exactly <gotta, laughs> I uh, guess the one yeah, thing that always creeps me out about the one is it's like right next to like a family like um I don't know in California I'm sure they probably have them like you know like like the just like the uh, like the old like drive-in type like restaurants you know hot dogs hamburgers you know like root oh, beer type things there's no windows or no there's no windows right no there's no windows to this building but it's like literally like not even twenty yards from like a restaurant where people are taking their kids to eat. 
Yeah, well, they're, the people are getting their spins out inside. They're not jerking off. They're not I jerking know, off. but it's still for- weird. Like, no. who who does that? Like, like the restaurant looks at the family jerking off because they, they couldn't make it to the the porno store. <laughs> I just feel like, why would you put them so close to each other? Like, first off, like, who came, well, who came first? I mean, no the porn intended. store had dibs, and then the family restaurant came over there and tried to make them all uncomfortable. But, you know, they're like, you know what, whatever. Like, you know, they just they go in there, they do the thing, they come off. You know, I'm guessing, like, you know, <laughs> I don't think they, like, hang out around front. But, you know, it is, it is funny that they just happen to be close to each other because they're very um, opposite places. Like, yeah, they're literally, like, in the same parking lot. Like, you could literally, like, throw your hamburger we, and hit the wall of this one, building. And Lancaster called, like, the fun zone gift. And as I was a kid, I was like, oh, my God, it's a toy store. And, like, it's, it's just toys, novelties, all that. But, like, it was a sex shop. But, like, I remember as a kid, like, we always wanted to go in because we thought it's a toy store. But, like, wait, it's a toy store we can't go to? That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Now, some of those are fun. Like, there's one here in How Philly you called... Guys go, hey, no. <laughs> That's not fair. Like, like, they're fun to go in. Like, I don't know if I would ever buy anything there, but, like, they're, they're fun to kind of, like, see shit. Like, there's a place no, called Condom you... Kingdom in Philly on South Street, you know? Oh, I mean, honestly, you never know, because what if there's something, like, you really, like you and your partner have, like, always wanted to try, or, like, you get an idea together, or, or, like, somebody's like, oh, this product's cool, like, this is fun to, like, experiment, because there's, like, possibilities are endless, you know? Or, like, like, you find out something you like. Or, like, the, uh, the, the Larry Flint, like, Hustler store that's on, uh, Bourbon Street. Oh, this- Oh, oh, yeah, his store is really good. Like, that's always his- cool. I always make sure I go, like, take a tour through there when I'm in New Orleans. Just to see what's oh, going yeah, on. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I was there too. It was, it was, yeah. His store is really good. I want to go to Condom Kingdom because I like the name, and I could just imagine the mascot being like a condom with a happy face on it. Like it is. I, <laughs> ah! <laughs> like, like, yeah. I'm like, uh, I want to go there just to like get a T-shirt or like a sticker to prove that I was there. <laughs> I'm, you know what? I was just gonna say that I'm definitely gonna hook that up for you next time I'm, I'm over in Philly. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Condom Kingdom and hook you up with some Condom Kingdom swag. <laughs> I can't wait to go cause to come back to Philly. I, I love Philly. It's one of my favorite places that I've been to in the United States. Now, speaking of toys, like, so you have your own toy, correct? I, I do. I mean, it's the holiday giving season, so we got to promote this toy like we're QVC or something here. So, so this toy, it's, it's not a flashlight. It's a dual-ended, hands-free stroker. So this thing is, you guys, it's incredible. So um, Penthouse and Topco, they, I, I picture them, it's like, they molded my pussy, they molded my butt, they molded my face, they molded my boobs, they molded, like, I mean, all these different positions. And so it's like two ends in two different textures. So one end is my pussy, and it looks exactly like my pussy. It's so amazing. I was like, oh, my God. So like putting my fingers in it. <laughs> and then I'm, then the, and then when you unscrew the cap on the other end, the other end is my butt. And it's two different textures. So it's like literally you're fucking, you can fuck two different holes. And it's really cool because it has a shower mount. So if you're like in the shower, you can mount it to, or you, you can mount it to any flat surface. But I was just thinking shower because it's like, you know, easy as cleanup. So you just mm-hmm. mount it in the shower and you don't even have to use your hands. You could like, you could suck my holes while you're like shampooing your hair mm-hmm. or like, you know, um, brushing your teeth or whatever, you know, like, <laughs> <try something else. laughs> and then, and then um, after you're done, like, you know, it's, you're already in the shower. So then uh, it, it washes out the stuff and it just comes out of the other end. So it's way, way clean, way hygienic. You could, it, you could use it way more times than maybe a toy that doesn't clean out very easily. And you don't have to use any powders or any stuff like that. And um, I'm selling it right now on my OnlyFans. And I'm offering to them um, a really special price in honor of Cyber Monday. But since I did your show, I'll offer it to your listeners for the same price when they join my OnlyFans. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, amazing. So I uh, just go to my OnlyFans and uh, sign up for, like, five ninety nine, dollars I could give you this special prize. And just think of the five ninety nine to look at my website and take care of shipping. Yeah, <laughs> and I sign I- it. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Like I like I just Google this thing and I'm like looking at it and I'm like, OK, I'm like they show like a picture of it mounted on like the shower wall. Ah, it, it legit is mounted on this, the, the, the wall. And like this is this is an amazing thing that I think everybody should uh, be a stocking ah, there's, there's stuffer. A, oh, my or, gosh. Yeah. 
my friends are like, give me one, give me one. They're like obsessed. And I honestly, this is just like, it's a beautiful, amazing product. It's like, I have a lot of girls buy it for their guys. A lot of, I saw a lot of them when I do my appearances at the strip club, a lot of the girls buy it for their guys and they're, they're like, yeah, and you know, it's just fun. It's like best, it's like giving him the best hand job he's ever had. And I'm like, wow, that's really fucking cool. Like a lot of girls get it as gifts for their boyfriends and a lot of guys get it, you know, for themselves. But I'm like, oh, like it, it, I heard it just feels amazing. And, and you know, what's crazy about it too, is that like, so this thing is like, it's like on Amazon, which is the craziest thing. That's like the first site that came up. So you are oh my definitely gosh. like, you, you've you you've made it now when they start selling your, your stuff on Amazon. So you could totally. Wait, really? I'm going to do it right I didn't even know that. Yeah, you could totally like, like search Amazon and like you pop up. Like that's. I want them to buy it from me though. Yeah, <laughs> definitely buy it from you. But I just thought it was cool that like, if you type in. Christiana like Sin on a- Amazon, like this shows up. Wait, really? Oh, um, maybe I'm not looking hard enough. <laughs> I'm totally, I'm totally gonna text this over to you. <laughs> I just screenshotted it. I'm like, whoa! It like she's on Amazon. Like that's when you know wow. you've made it. <laughs> wow! Oh my God! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you for saying that I made it. That's so sweet of you. <laughs> Like, you know you've made it when you officially are available on Amazon, you know. Um, but speaking of where you're available, so I need you to tell everybody where they can stalk you at on the internet. Because everybody does social. I mean, there, I feel like every day there's another social account that I, I'm learning about. So where can people find you at? Yes. So um, to... Talk with me anytime. Join me on OnlyFans. Uh, Christiana Sin, my Black Friday sale is still going on now. So for $5.99, it'll, it'll get you access to over 100 videos and all these pictures and, and uh, the super deal for the stroker and all the other cool stuff that I have going on. And um, it's l- like literally too hot for Instagram. So I think you guys are going to like it. <laughs> and and $5.99, you know, it's like really amazing, good deal. Like less than, less than, less than the price of a burger and fries. Exactly. <laughs> and, um, and then to find me, um, to see what I'm up to on Instagram, my Instagram is Ulala Christiana. And uh, please follow as well Hot Sauce Holiday. And I'm also on Twitter at Christiana Sin. Awesome. Awesome. Is there anything you want the fans to know or final thoughts you want to share with them before we get out of here? Well, for um, any companies I'm um, listening or any people who um, uh, people who would like me to like model for their products or, um, you know, like do a shoot, you can contact me at connect, the, the number two, sin, C-I-N-N, at gmail.com. And for interview requests, uh, interview, uh, please contact Star Factory PR. And, um, yeah, uh, the main appearance will be, I'll be at our Basel, uh, I mean, our Basel in Miami, uh, December 5th through the 9th. And I'll be in San Francisco the 3rd through the 4th of December. And then after that, I'll be back in LA. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for, and I'm, for, I'm looking at the upcoming appearances. So the next time you'll be closest <laughs> to us out here in the Philadelphia area will be uh, December 13th through the 15th at Teasers in Wilkes-Barre, PA, which is a little little bit of a hike here from Philly. But, I mean, you know, as long as the weather is cooperating, definitely make yourself out there PA. and see her. Yeah, come see me at Teasers. Like, please come see me at Teasers. I'll be there the 13th through the 15th, and I'll be doing live stage shows, lap dances. I'll, I'll have my stroker there so you could just see, see it up close, see how real it is. And, uh, yeah, it's so much fun. I can't wait to meet you guys. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Like, it was a huge honor. I've been a fan for, I mean, as long as I can remember now. And I've, I've, I just, I'm giddy as shit. I told you this the other day. I was like, I'm giddy to have had you on. And uh, make sure everybody goes out there, follows her on all her socials. Uh, make sure you check out MixMasterB.com. We'll have the podcast on there for you to download and listen to. And we'll put, you know, a Hot Sauce Holidays info on there. And we're going to, you know, just get people to buy these uh, these toys of yours, you know, because uh, I think I might just start hooking my friends up one of these for Christmas now. And buy, buy them from me because then I yes. can sign them. It's cool that she's like, on Amazon, but buy them directly from her. It's authentic, you know. Yeah, just, sign it you can, you can buy me and a magazine, too, so you could, like, 
literally look at me like, what? That's it. Looks exactly like her. She's in front of me. Oh, my God. Ah, I'm going to come. <laughs> and it didn't cost you a pizza or 200 bucks. So, you know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on again. And uh, it's awesome to finally have got to talk to you. Thank and next you time know. you're back out in the Philadelphia area, like, we got to do it up real big in Philly. We'll go make a trip to Condom Kingdom. We'll get you some of your, the Condom Kingdom stuff. Oh, my stuff. God. Love that. Can we film it? That would be amazing. I, I am totally down to film anything with you. You do not even Let's have to ask it. me that. <laughs> <Love it. laughs> I need I would need videographic proof to, 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 to like just gloat and brag about for the rest of my life. Yes, definitely. Oh, and you know what video proof to prove that it really happened, so you know it's real. They'd be like, What happened to that guy that passed out next to you? Oh, that was the DJ. Yeah, um, he got a little too excited. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate it again, and uh, we hope to hear real big things from you real soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. This is Chris Jamison, and you're listening to Mixmaster B on MMB Radio.